In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how you can use Perplexity within N8N, and I'm also going to show you how you can build your own AI research assistant. Unlike other tools limited by knowledge cutoffs, Perplexity gives you fresh information directly from the internet, making it perfect for research, content creation, and staying on top of any topic. So let's dive in. Okay, before we get started, I'm just going to show you the finished automation and what this does. So essentially this automation, when you click run workflow, what it's going to do is it's going to get information from Airtable. And this is going to be something like an article that you want to research. It's then going to run it through perplexity to do additional research and find out more about the topic. And then it's going to do a summarization of all of the information it finds. And then we're going to push that back into Airtable. So let's see this in action. So I have an Airtable database and there was recently a release of GPT 4.5. So I've captured this article here, which you can find here. So this article introduces GPT 4.5. And what we want to do is summarize that and then do some additional research to find out more information about this topic. So I have the source URL field here. I also have a column here for selected. Essentially what this allows you to do is if you have multiple articles you want to research, you can just choose which ones you actually want to execute within the automation. So this is quite handy if you have a lot of um, ideas or articles kept in your database, you maybe only want to select one or two. And what we're going to do is we're going to populate this with the research we get from perplexity and also the summary that we generate from our assistant. Okay, so let's run this once. All right, so as you can see, we have the research from perplexity in here. And then we also have the summary of the article here. We can expand this just to see what that looks like. Okay, so this looks like a good summary. All right, so now we're gonna go and build this automation from scratch. So let's create a new workflow. And we're gonna add a manual trigger. And then we're also going to start by pulling in the data from Airtable. So let's click on Airtable. And we're gonna search for records. AI News Agents is the right database. Then we wanna select the table as the inputs table. And then we just wanna test that. So I already have a credential set up, so this works fine. As you can see, we're pulling in the, uh, the source, which is the article we want to do research on. And then what we want to do here is add that filter step. And the filter is going to look for any records where selected is equal to true. So let's go and add the value here. And then we're going to change this to Boolean is true. Perfect. And let's test that step again. That should pass through the filter. You can see we're keeping that one record because it does have the value of selected to true. If, however, I was to go and take off the selected checkbox, then that wouldn't come through. All right, so this is working well. And then the next thing we want to do is add perplexity. So NAN doesn't have a built-in perplexity module that you can use, so we're going to have to build our own. So in order to do this, we're going to go and take a look at the perplexity API documentation. So the way you do this is if you search for perplexity API docs, you should see uh, the documentation homepage, and then you should see a quick start down here. And essentially what this allows you to do is it tells you step-by-step step how to go and register for their API and how to configure it, and then how to make a, an example API request to that API. So you are gonna need to top up your balance and you're also gonna need to register with perplexity. I'm gonna show you how to do that in a second. All right, so in order to use the Perplexity API, what you need to do is come over here into Perplexity. And once you've logged in, you need to click on this icon here for your settings. And if you click on the API tab, this is where you can add additional credits to your account. You can put five, ten dollars in here. It doesn't really matter how much it is. And then we can generate an API key down here. I already have one generated. I'm going to go ahead and delete that one, generate a new key. You're going to need to copy the API key because we're going to need it later. Okay, jumping back into the documentation, you can see here we have a curl request. Essentially what this is, is it's a way to make a request to the Perplexity API from your terminal. If you're a developer, you'll be familiar with this syntax. So we can see here we have the Perplexity AI endpoint, and then we have some additional headers and our API key that we're sending across. And we also have the you know, system and user message that we want to send to Perplexity. So this is how we invoke the Perplexity API. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy the curl request. And we're going to add a HTTP module. And you can see here there's a button at the top called import curl. While we could fill in all of the details here by hand and change the request method and the URL, what we're going to do is just click on import curl. 
And then we're going to paste in the example we have here. So this is a curl command. And if you click import, you should see that this actually populates all of the information we need. So this is a good start. There's only two things we need to change now in this request. The first one is we're going to have to add in our own API key. And then the other one, when you do import from curl, for some reason, there is a mistake here, which I'll just show you in a second. So let's go back to perplexity. Let's copy our API key and let's paste it into this field up here. So we need to replace your API key here. So it should say bearer space and then the key that you generated. And if we go and run this now, you'll see that it says bad request. The reason is for some reason, when we copy and paste from the perplexity docs, there is an additional space in the model name and it doesn't like it. So what you need to do is just remove that trailing space. And now if you run that again, it should work correctly. Okay, great. So it did exactly what we expected it to do. It's gone to perplexity and it searched the query that we added. How many stars are there in our galaxy? It all seems to be working fine. So one more thing we're going to do is just rename this module to perplexity so we know where we are. Okay, and so the next thing we're going to want to do here is actually change the prompt. And this is a little bit more difficult now because we're using this method of invoking the API. If you have a slightly longer prompt, it's going to be quite difficult to paste that prompt into this section, and I'll show you why. So I already have a prompt generated. And I'm just going to bring that over here. Okay, so I have a prompt that I'm going to use. I'm just going to get rid of the system prompt because we don't need that. We're only going to use the user prompt. So the problem here is that if I paste my prompt directly in here, just so you can see what the prompt is, um, you can see it looks okay in theory, but it's actually going to break things uh, within perplexity. Okay, so I'll just go give you a, an overview of the prompt. What it says is analyze and summarize the following article and conduct additional research on its topic. We're going to output a specific structure with a title, a description, a summary, and a set of key points. But let's go back to this example. We can't paste the prompt directly as it is into this uh, section here because it's invalid JSON. And what that means is the API won't be able to understand this request. So we're going to have to go over to Claude. And the way we get around this is we need to use an AI model. This could be ChatGPT, anything you like. What you can do is you can paste your prompt into Claude and you can say, convert this into a valid JSON string. And then you can put your prompt here between two quote marks. So as you can see here, I've pasted in the entire prompt that we're going to be using. And then if we run this with Claude, what you'll find is it just returns a single string that we can then copy and paste. And you'll notice it's added additional things like line break characters. This is essentially making sure that the, uh, the, the string is valid to send to the API. Okay, so if we copy this directly into here, we should have more luck. Okay, great. Let's just expand that and make sure it looks correct. You can see here now, this is just one big long string. It's harder to read. Um, and then we have a dynamic variable here, which is the article that we're going to research. So we do need to change this to an expression. And then if we expand this one more time, you should be able to see, we need to change this to uh, json.source, which is the source URL that we have from Airtable. And you should see here, then it expands that correctly. So it's injecting the correct prompts over to perplexity. All right, so let's just test this step and make sure it works. Okay, so this looks good. We're getting a response back from perplexity. You can see here we're getting additional citations. These are the articles that perplexity referenced when it did its research. Um, you can see here, it says OpenAI unveils ChatGPT 
So this looks like it's done the right thing. It's done a good summarization of the, um, the URL. So this is looking good. All right. So the next thing we're going to go and build is our um, assistant, which is going to summarize that slightly longer bit of information from perplexity. And we're going to summarize it into a much shorter uh, summary that we can maybe use in a newsletter or something along those lines. So we can add an LLM chain. It's important to note that you could actually go ahead and use perplexity on its own to do, generate your summary. It does have a built-in large language model. I prefer this to do this in two stages because I like to have the original raw research. And then I like to do a second step where I summarize it just because you get more flexibility. If you want to regenerate the summary for any reason, um, if you want to go back and see more information, it's nice to have the, the, the more in-depth research. And then it's also nice to have a shorter summary. So I always do this in two steps. Um, okay, so we're going to build an LLM chain and we're going to define our own prompt. I already have a prompt uh, created for this and I'll show you how it works. So what we're going to do here, we're going to add a system prompt and we're going to expand this. And the system prompt, what it's going to do is it's going to say, you are an assistant that, that creates concise summaries based on an input you will be given. Follow this structure exactly. And we're going to have a title. We have a couple of examples of what good titles look like for a summary. So these are a few newsletter article titles that I found that I like. We're going to have a summary, a list of key points, and then a final takeaway then at the end for the reader. Um, we've also got some additional guidelines here about using active voice and, and the particular writing style. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to paste in the perplexity research directly. And then the final thing we need to do is to wire up an LLM. I'm just going to use Claude 3.5. There is a newer release 3.7, which we could use, but just for demo, I'm just going to use 3.5 to keep it simple. Um, okay, so let's run, let's go and test this one. All right, you can see it did a good job of summarizing. So we have the, the longer research, and then we also have a much smaller and more condensed summary that we could use in content, whether that's an article, a newsletter, or something along those lines. So we have both pieces here. Let's just rename this to summary, generate summary. Let's give it a good name so we know what's going on. And then one more trick, we're going to make this nice and neat. We're going to add this sticky note up here, and we're just going to separate these two sections. So just kind of keep our automations nice and organized. This part of the automation, what it does is it's going to do the research and summary. So research and summarize. And then finally, the final step is we're going to push that summary back up into Airtable. So what we need to do is add an Airtable node, and this time we're going to create a record. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our database here, and we're going to put a record into the output table, uh, which will contain our research. Let me just delete this one. Okay. So we need to select the AI news agent as the base, and then we need to select the table as the output. And then what we want to do is we want to inject all of these fields uh, from the data we had before. So we're going to pull in the URL as the source. Is going to have the research as the research we got from Perplexity. And then we're going to also add in the summary that we got from our LLM. So we're going to add in the summary as well. And let's just test that one. Okay, looking good. Looks like it did the right thing and it's put the um, summary back in here. So this is looking good. Let's go and find one more news article that we can use um, here. So let's look for some AI news. All right, so there's an interesting article here about a new AI model from Tencent that is apparently faster than DeepSeek R1. So this sounds interesting and we might want to include this in our research or newsletter. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back here to the input table. We're going to paste in the article. We'll deselect that one, select this one. And then let's just see what we get by running the workflow end to end. Okay, so this looks good. Um, and we now should have a summary 
Uh, you can see here, this is the research we did from Perplexity. Tencent unveils a new AI model. Uh, we get a description. We get a fairly long uh, breakdown of what this uh, particular item was. And then you can see here, we also have a much shorter summary that we could use in our newsletter, for example. Okay, so that all looks good. And then finally, we're just going to save that. All right, so there we are. We are done. We've learned to use Perplexity with inside N8N, and we've also built our own AI research assistant. I hope this video was useful to you. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. And thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.